Now, voters in Turkey are being called on to elect a new president and parliament this Sunday. Opposition leader Kemal Kilic Darulu has a narrow lead over the incumbent president. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who's seeking a third term. Kilic Darulu heads the secular centre-left Republican People's Party, or CHP. Our correspondent Julia Hahn caught up with him on the campaign trail in Istanbul. I'm joined by Turkish presidential candidate Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. Mr. Kılıçdaroğlu, thank you for your time. Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been at the helm of Turkish politics for more than 20 years. You say you want to end his authoritarian rule. What is the biggest change people here in Turkey will see if you win the presidency? We will fulfill people's longing for democracy. That's the biggest change, and it won't only be seen here in Turkey, but by the whole world. We will bring true democracy to this country. Many young people here in Turkey tell me they don't see a future here in the country. They want to leave. What are you telling these young people? We'll create an environment for young people to work in Turkey, and we'll provide them with a good income. If we do this, then young people won't go abroad. They'll stay in their own country. Turkey's relations with um, many of its Western partners, with the EU, with NATO, have suffered in recent years. What is your message to Turkey's Western allies? We will turn Turkey's foreign policy around 180 degrees. We'll bring all the democratic rules stipulated by the European Union to our country. The leaders of our six-party opposition alliance have agreed on all the arrangements that need to be made within this framework agreement, and we will implement them in our country. The biggest change will be answering people's calls for democracy. And how would your relationship with uh, Russian President Putin look like? We are a member of the NATO alliance. We are also a country that has applied for membership to the European Union. Therefore, we will turn towards the West and towards Western civilization. Of course, we would like to have good relations with Russia. We have many business people working there. But we do not think Russia's invasion of Ukraine is right, and we do not accept it. What will happen to uh, political prisoners like philanthropist Osman Kavala or Kurdish politician Selahattin Demirtas? Will they be freed? There are already judicial decisions for their release, and those judicial decisions must be implemented. No one should be in jail because of their thoughts. That's our main objective. You have a narrow lead in the polls. Uh, the pre-election atmosphere here in Turkey seems quite heated. Are you concerned for your security? Let me put it this way. The security issue is one of the main problems in Turkey, but I have no worries because I am totally focused on the election. And we will win this election and bring democracy to Turkey. Do you think the current administration will ensure a democratic um, handover of power or do you expect problems and delays? I told the people to go to the polling stations and vote, and a lot of people will go there and vote in these elections, and we will win and send Erdogan away. If you lose the election, what will Turkey lose? What's at stake here? We will not lose the election. We will win the election. Thank you for your time. Çok teşekkürler. Merci. Thank you, Shah. Well, DW correspondent Julia Hahn, who conducted that interview, joins me now from, from Istanbul. Uh, Julia, polls show that Kemal Kilic Darulu has a narrow lead in the presidential race. Give us your impression of him after you met him. Well, some call him the anti Erdogan because really Kilic Daolu couldn't be more different from the man he is trying to oust, where Erdogan is brash and bombastic, a charismatic speaker, confrontational. Kilic Daolu is calm and soft spoken. I had the impression he was very down to earth, um, a calm character. Um, we actually only had a few minutes to talk to him on his campaign bus. I had many more questions lined up, but I think. I think the main message he is trying to get across is about democracy. He promises to bring back parliamentary democracy to Turkey, to get rid of this almost all-powerful presidential system, to restore the independence of institutions, the central bank, the judiciary, the media, to fix the economy. So when you look at uh, President Erdogan and his main challenger there, they're not just very different uh, when it comes to their character, but they also uh, promise a very different vision for Turkey's future. Mm.
Now, what I found very interesting, Kilis Sterlu told you he would turn Turkey's foreign policy around by 180 degrees. What can we expect there? Well, I think this is really a very clear message uh, to the West. Uh, the opposition are basically saying, look, we know that in recent years, relations with the US, the European Union, NATO have been strained. We know that the Erdogan government held up Finland's accession to NATO. They're still holding up uh, Sweden's and the opposition are clearly saying it's going to be different with us. Obviously, they also want and need uh, foreign investment from Western countries. Um, I think when you're looking at their Russia policy in case of an opposition victory, we won't see too many changes because Turkey is very dependent on Russia for energy, for energy, for example. Um, so um, I, I don't expect a, a very big change there when it comes to uh, a new government's Russia policy. But one of the election promises here uh, by Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu is a rather controversial one. He promises to send back many of the the 4 million Syrians here in Turkey voluntarily, he says, back to Syria within two years. Uh, this is the opposition appealing to nationalist voters, reacting to the high anti-refugee sentiment here in the country. But analysts say this is a rather unrealistic, uh, a populist promise there by the opposition. Uh, Julia, uh, stay uh, with us, please. In the interview, Kilis Derlu also said that human rights activists like Osman Kavala should not be jailed for thinking differently. Now, we're going to take a quick look now at a report about Kavala, who has been jailed for more than five years for allegedly organizing anti-government protests in 2013. He was described by Erdogan as the enemy of the state. All they say, day and night, is Kavala, Kavala. Kavala. Who is this Kavala? The Turkish government has accused Osman Kavala of a great many things, of being the Turkish representative of the US billionaire and democracy activist George Soros, of organising the Gezi Park protests 10 years ago and of being involved in the 2016 coup attempt. Turkish courts were unable to prove any of these allegations but Kavala is nevertheless serving a life sentence without parole in Europe's biggest prison, Marmara, in western Turkey. Few people are allowed to visit him, he's not allowed to talk to journalists, but Deutsche Welle has been able to interview the 65-year-old through a series of letters. We've had his words spoken by an actor. I think I'm experiencing a different sense of time here. It flows faster. The boundaries between days and months become blurred, as if they are mixed with each other. Osman Kavala supported artists and civil society activities and championed the rights of minorities like Kurds and Armenians. When the Turkish government decided to build a shopping centre on the site of Istanbul's Gezi Park, he joined the 2013 protests against the destruction of this public space, a claim that he was a key orchestrator of the demos would eventually land Kavala in jail. <laughs> During the protests, I brought a loudspeaker and a plastic table to the park. These, in addition to some cookies, constitute the evidence, the only evidence provided in the indictment in support of the allegation that I had funded the protests. Many artists and civil rights activists in Turkey are fighting Kavala's corner. The European Court of Human Rights denounced his imprisonment as an infringement of the European Convention on Human Rights and ordered his release. But President Erdogan and Turkey's courts aren't listening. If Erdogan loses the elections on the 14th of May, the opposition says it will act on the ECHR's decision and reopen the case against Kavala. I have never worried that I might spend the rest of my life behind bars. But at the same time, I can't foresee when I'll be released. Now, Julia, what are Kavala's chances of getting out of jail? Well, right now, for people like Osman Kavala, an opposition victory is the only hope to be set free because Kemal Kalishta also, also said it, uh, he would uh, implement court decisions, international court decisions, and then things could move uh, ahead rather quickly. If Erdogan wins again, of course, uh, the story is a very different one.
Well, President Erdogan is uh, currently second in the polls. He's facing the fight of his life. How is he trying to rally support in these last days? Well, it's actually, if you look at the polls, a knife edge race. But uh, let's remember, Erdogan controls the state resources, he controls the airwaves. So the competition is already very heavily tilted uh, towards, uh, towards him. Um, so it's actually quite remarkable that the opposition managed to present a real challenge to this president who uh, has been in power for more than 20 years, first as prime minister, then as president. Um, but Erdogan still enjoys is the support of many religious conservative voters here in Turkey. Uh, many people I speak with really think that he is the only one who can run this country, who can hold this country together. Many people would also say he's the one who basically dragged Turkey out of the dark times of the 90s in terms of development. He's a man of action who can stand up to the West. And these emotions are a big factor in these elections. And that's why they are so unpredictable. Good news. Julia Hahn in Istanbul there. Thank you, Julia.